Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are at. This is Stacy Kruzik, and I'm from the Zebra Developer Relations team. I am here to help host our Zebra Dev Talk for today. Um, we're welcoming James Kimball uh, as a presenter today on how to use specialized print integration tools. And I just wanted to note a couple of things in housekeeping rules before we are underway. First, uh, if there are questions um, or if there's any technical difficulty that you have on your end or you can't hear us for some reason, I am following all of you in the question uh, text box and I can respond to that as needed. Um, the questions, however, will be held towards the end of the dev talk today. And then uh, we'll let, let James address those. All right, so that's a quick snapshot of our portal. And we invite all of you, if you are not participating already, please join our developer community. It's free to join. We'll have information about upcoming dev talks, upcoming events, and also our blogs on any technical topic that could be of interest to you. So we encourage you to join our Zebra developer community and please follow us. And with that, today I'm going to turn this over to James Kimball and take it away, James. Hey, everybody. Um, as Stacy said, my name is James Kimball. I'm a software engineer at Zebra Technologies. I work on our software development kits and APIs. And today, uh, we're going to start by talking about all of our spe specialized print integration tools. Um, these go from our web printing tools, like our Cloud Connect and Browser Print, and our Android apps. Uh, we have a Browser Print beta for that as well as Print Connect. Um, our Print from PLCs for more of a, the enterprise solution, and some new card integration tools that we've released in the last year. All right, so with our first one, our Cloud Connect, uh, this is our secure connectivity, um, helping with any cloud printing solutions that you may need. Um, cloud Connect allows our LinkOS printers to interact with the cloud, forwarding data from any, of the, any port of your choosing. You can connect LinkOS printers securely and directly to cloud-based apps via standard WebSocket technology. Uh, this will allow you to do printer management, printing, and data collection on your full fleet of printers. Um, so how Cloud Connect works is our LinkOS printers will securely connect through WebSockets to our Zebra.war, which is our web services SDK. Um, from there, it uses Tomcat to link into our LinkOS SDK and our APIs, um, which is the back end of your web app. Um, from there, the web app will just use HTTP to be able to be accessed from your browser. So yeah, um, some of the APIs that we have in there to help connect your printer up. Uh, the first one we would use would be our remote discoverer API to discover our printers. So you can see here on line 25, um, we're using remote discover dot get connected printers on the default port of 11.99.5. That port is um, changeable and that's just something you have to change in the setup of the Cloud Connect. From there, once you discover that printer, you can add it to your list of uh, slim disco printers by just creating a new slim disco printer out of the discovered printer you found. Once you've found the printer and you're ready to connect to it, um, you can create a connection to the printer using its serial number. So here on line 26, you can see where we create a remote connection using the new remote connection with the serial number, and again, that same port, 11995. 
Once we've created that connection, we're able to open it on line 27 and then create a zebra printer out of that. Our zebra printer is part of the SDK. That is the object that you can do the most out of. You can print, you can get status of your printer, um, you can connect or you can set that up with a multi-channel connection so you can keep printing while you're um, changing settings or getting status of that printer. Um, so yeah, on line 30 here, um, the last thing we're doing in this example is printing a configuration label. And with that Zebra printer, it's as simple as just calling the method print configuration label. So moving on to our browser print, our browser print is an app that allows web pages to communicate with the Zebra printers directly through the client's computer's connection. It does have the ability to auto discover USB and network connected Zebra printers. Uh, it allows two way communication to your devices, it has the ability to set a default printer for the end user application independent of the default printer used by the operating system. So that means that once you go onto your web page, you're able to go ahead and click the print button from your web page and it will print to your Zebra printer, not your HP printer sitting next to you. And then it also has the ability to print PNGs, JPEGs, any kind of image using its URL. This will help solve any kind of core connectivity issues for the developers. Um, it is supported on most web pages, Safari, Chrome, Internet Explorer. Um, yep, so with this, um, really the only thing you have to do to modify this is modify your own web app. Um, all the connectivity in the background is done by browser print. And we will show you an example of that in just a minute. The one issue with this that you might need to be aware of is with all of the new updates to Chrome, Safari, and Internet Explorer, um, the actual HTTP there might break and you may have to use HTTPS on that but you'll just have to keep an eye on the updates with your browsers for that. So here's some of the example code from our browser print example. Um, one of the first things I'll show is again, discovering devices with browser print. For this, we just call the get local devices from the API. You can see that happening here on the first line. And this will only add devices that are not already selected by checking the device's unique identifier. And that is happening there about five lines in on the if statement. Um, so as long as the device has not already been added, it'll go ahead and add the device to your list and you can select which printer you'd like to be talking with, printing with, and working with on your browser print. So to send a ZPL label to the printer and get the printer status on browser print, um, from our APIs, we can use the write to selected printer function, which right here we see we're just taking the selected device and sending the data to write and making sure that if there's an error callback, we can catch it there. Again, we have the read from selected printer to receive the information back from the printer. So down here, we're just calling the read and making sure that there's no errors in that error callback once we get the um, data read back from the printer. So this is an example of how browser print will work on the computer. So the first thing we can do is we see that we have this browser print app right here on the left. Uh, if we do a discovery, we'll see all the printers that 
are around, which right now I only have one. So there's that. Otherwise, you can actually go from your drivers that are installed on the computer. So for now, I'm just using the one printer that I have around me. So the next thing we see here is we have no accepted hosts. The accepted host is your web page or your web app. Once you go to your web page, you'll notice that you have the option to add, not add or completely cancel adding this as an accepted host. So if you say no, it'll just tell you, hey, you were not, this is not an accepted host, please try again. Once you accept it, you'll be able to go to your web page. This is our test web page. So there's very little here right now. Um, but as you can see, you can easily print a label straight to the printer. Yep, and that was with the media door open. So the printer was paused. It knew the status of the printer and told you, hey, please check your printer and try again. And then again with the accepted host, you can easily clear the list or delete one at a time. Once you do that and refresh the page, you'll notice again that you have to go back and accept the host. So that is browser print for the web page. We also have a browser print for Android. Um, so with browser print for Android, it's very similar to the web page. Um, to connect a printer, you'll go up here in the top with the little hamburger. Once you select that, it'll open up a drop down showing you all of your Bluetooth devices around you. When you find the one in the list you'd like, you can go ahead and click it. On success, you'll see all the information of the printer. You'll be able to go into your accepted or blocked domains which are the same as the accepted hosts on the web page option. However, on a failure, you'll notice that none of the information is populated here. So from there, you'll just have to go back and either select a different device or select that same device and try again. With managing the domains, it's very similar to the web page. Um, instead of a pop-up directly in front of your face. You kind of have the drop down that Android does. It's going to say, give you a alert that says, hey, your domain is attempting to access. Would you like to allow or block this? Again, if you block it, the web page is going to pop up, tell you to try again. If you allow it, um, you'll see on the far right image here that our cagdemo.com uh, has been allowed. And then once you do a long press on your domain, you're able to either delete it or cancel that and click it. So here we have a demo of browser print from the Android device. So this will go through about the same process that we did with the web page one. First thing we'll do is discover a printer around us. Like I said, once you found the printer you'd like, you can go ahead and just tap it once and that will select it. You'll pair with the printer. As long as all the information shows up here, you have successfully paired with that printer and you can go ahead and go to your web page or your domain. Yep, and with just an Android notification, you can allow it. It'll dump, it'll go right into your accepted domains without you having to go back to the app. You can 
easily stay on the web page and just start doing what you needed to do. Yep, if there are any issues while printing to the printer, um, the error will pop up there. Um, it does not show the full air like it does with the status letting you know that your printer head is open or what the exact issue was but it will tell you that it was not allowed to print and that you need to go check your printer in connection all okay. right so moving on for android we also have a print connect with our seven intent apis here um, so it's a Print Connect app. It makes it simple for developers to add label and receipt printing to their Android solutions. It handles the discovery and pairing process with Zebra Link OS printers via Bluetooth or YLAN connections, reducing the amount of code required in your app. So we can see over here in our code example, when we want to create a uh, the print connect will create a new intent. We'll set the component in that intent to the com.zebra.printConnect. And we're going to have it be a print pass through service here. Um, so then right below that, we're putting in the pass through data as a byte array. And then we're putting in a res result receiver, which will let you know if there are any errors on that print. So if the result code is zero, we're going to say that it was a successful print and go ahead and handle that there in the if. Otherwise it was unsuccessful and we'll look inside that result data to figure out what the error message was. Okay, so we have a little demo here for Print Connect. So again, with all of our apps for Android, the first thing you want to do is discover your printer and select it. Depending on the uh, minimum security level of your printer, you may have to pair with it like we just did there. Once you've selected it, you can select from your list of ZPL files or images or whatever you're looking to print here. This also allows for um, cloud storage and like Box or Dropbox. Then you also have the ability to go through your whole Android file system. So if you draw, drag and drop a file into your downloads folder on your Android phone from your computer, you're able to go into the files on your Android phone and print directly from there as well. So the little refresh up here in the top right corner, um, when you click that, it's going to go out, talk to your printer and check the status of your printer. A uh, green check mark means it's good to go. A red dash here means that there is an error with your printer and you sh will have to go take a look at your printer to see what exactly that error was. So moving on to our enterprise solutions, we have our Zebra Network Connect. The Network Connect seamlessly connects Zebra ultra rugged scanners and printers to the most widely used industrial ethernet protocols and other standard networks without additional conversion hardware. So what does that mean? That means that it enables the ability for printer management through um, connecting your whole fleet of through this uh, industrial ethernet protocols 
Uh, also gives you the ability to do faster updates with less disruption as all of your printers will be connected through web sockets directly to a central location. You won't have to pull a printer out of your fleet to manage it. You'll be able to manage it through the web page or how whatever fits your um, your company the best. So before the Network Connect for printers, you had to handwrite your ZPL. Once you did that, you'd have to go and buy a uh, configure go buy and configure a converter box or write a co custom open socket code for your solution. From there, you could then write your ladder logic in Studio 5000. And the minute you needed to change your ZPL or you needed to add a new ZPL file, you had to start from the beginning and do it all over again. With the new, with Network Connect for printers, you can use our design label template in Zebra Designer and send that label to your printer. You'll still have to write your ladder logic in Studio 5000, but you skip the step of buying that and configuring that converter box or having to spend time writing your own custom open socket code. Instead, that's where Network Connect comes in and directly connects it. So from there, you can start printing. Um, say you need to update your label or you need to make some more labels for your printers, you're easily able to go back and design those and update them in Zebra Designer, send them directly to the printer and not have to go back through writing the ladder logic again. Yep, as I said, it's eliminating that cost from having to buy the converter. It's taking out failure points and complexity from your whole solution. So there's less things to go wrong. There's less things to check when things go wrong. Um, it simplifies that label design process. You don't have to go back and start from step one to write a new label or edit the label you wrote. You just go into Zebra Label Designer, create a new label, send it to the printer, and it's ready to go. There is special firmware needed to connect the printers to the PLC. But when you um, decide that you want to go with our PLC solution, we will provide you with that firmware. So moving into our new card applications, uh, we'll start with Card Studio 2.0. Um, here are the different options and what they come with. So the standard option, you'll be able to create multiple projects import existing Excel, uh, import Card Studio 1.0 projects and designs, configure window views, um, you'll have a live card preview, set dynamic data triggers, export data project, project data, and support for multiple data types. Um, moving a little bit further into that, if you do decide you want to go ahead and purchase the Enterprise or Professional version, these allow you to have database connectivity. So if you're creating badges or ID badges for your company, you'll be able to connect it straight to the database of people and workers from your company and click on a worker and send all their information to the card to be printed. Um, with the professional version, you're getting some smart card encoding options as well with the MyFire Classic and Plus and the DeskFire and EV1 slash two. So moving into Card Studio 2.0, um, there are three different applications that come with this. Um, we have the Design Studio interface, the same simple, easy to use interface for card design. Um, this didn't change a whole lot from Card Studio 1.0. The print with capability to add the dynamic fields. Um, so that you can see there. Once you click that, you're able to pop up the whole design and add any dynamic fields you'd like. And it has been designed to be used with the Print Studio 
which I will show you in just a second for data management, and card print and issuance. So the print studio interface is where the database part of it comes in. As you can see here in our image on the right, you have a list of all the employees, their ID numbers, first name, last name, uh, the department they work in, their address, all the information that you may need. Um, you can see in the picture below or in her, the spot right below the picture of Elisa, you can see her signature there as well. It does have a signature capture option. Um, so from this, what you can do is you can select the person, you can then export all of their information back to the design studio, and it'll pop up as you can see on the right side there with all of her information on the card, and you can print it from there. Uh, so the third app that comes with our Card Studio 2.0 is our Smart Card Editor. It has is improved encoding wizard with support for the MyFair and Desfire cards, like I said before. So one of the new additions to the Design Studio is our Card Studio 2.0 store. Our Card Studio 2.0 store has templates and will soon have more options for you to purchase as well. Um, so these templates include some education cards, some hospitality cards, event cards, thing, just some little things to help you get started if you don't know exactly what you wanna do with your cards. Um, we do plan on implementing some more in-depth and um, better designed cards that will be uh, paid, pay to use. But again, with this, you can just go up to the uh, store. You can either browse the store or you can click on my items, which will show you the ones you have downloaded and or purchased. Here's a little demo of the design studio. So here we're just going to make a new card design. Um, you have the option to open an already made one or import new ones or import ones that have not been built on Card Studio 2.0. So when you first make your card, you will see the front of the card at the top, the back of the card at the bottom. So we can see both are blank. Um, you have the ability to see one at a time, front or back, or you can see the whole view again. On the right side here, we have the preview, any of the card settings. So if you have a mag stripe on your card, you can add it there. So in the view, you'll see it and not accidentally add images or text over top of that. Um, you can add all of your fields for the card. So that means your first name, last name, phone number, all of that can be added in this dynamic fields section. So then for editing or creating the card, it we've tried to make it as simple and user-friendly as possible, something that you've probably used before or use things like this. Um, it's drag and drop for text boxes, images, things like that. You can resize them by clicking the text box and you'll see the little um, 
arrows pop up to allow you to resize it or uh, once you click on that text box in the bottom right side you see the element properties that's where you're able to set the text size set the text value everything like that and then as you can see here i went and browsed from the store i downloaded some education demo cards So moving on to our smart card editor. Um, again, we have the MyFair and Deskfire options to create a new card. When you create the type of card you'd like, it'll show you what fields you can enter and what you can enter in those fields. As you can see here, the AES field is a set size and it's all numbers. So until I had the correct version uh, amount of numbers in that, the box was red, letting you know there is an issue with what you've put here. So this is where you can add all of your information for the smart card, your keys, your blocks, everything like that. And you can select exactly where you want to write it on those blocks. Once you've filled up the whole smart card, it will not allow you to add any more dynamic data there. And then moving on to our print studio, this is where the databases come in handy. So as you can see, you can start a new project or you can open or import data to your project from another database. So once you select a uh, line from your database, you're able to see all the information down below. Um, you're also able to edit it here as well and then save it back into your record. Okay, so with the smart card calibration and test utility, which is our next card application, um, you have the ability to set up, test, and configure the AMK smart card encoding option. Um, this will also help you quickly identify and isolate any issues with smart card configuration. And you can calibrate and set the printer card offset location if necessary through this app. So as we can see here, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to connect our printer. So on the top left, you'll see that we now have a printer connected via USB. Um, from there, we can go ahead and do our smart card reader. Um, we have to verify our ATR. Once the ATR has been verified successfully, we can go ahead and 
do any kind of calibration test or do any contactless contact UHF uh, smart card encoding on here. Here's a demo of how that works. So as you can see here, your two options for printer discovery are either Ethernet, which you have to enter the address manually, or USB. So with Ethernet, it is a IP address there. You do not need the port number. Once your printer is successfully connected, it should pop up an image of it letting you know that, hey, we have your printer. Here's all the information about your printer. So our calibration test for our min is 20, our max is 40, and we're, we're going up by 10 at a time there. So you can see that the value of the 20 ATR right there came back. 30 had nothing in it. And 40 as well. So like I said, once you're ready to do your encoding, you can do your contactless contact and UHF all through this app. Here we'll select the different card types and enter the keys, sectors, and blocks that they need. And then their data is right down there. Contact is very similar to contactless. Um, just have a few different options here, like your mode and the length of your data. So the move card option here, what happens there is the printer moves the card onto the smart card encoder. Once the card has been put on the smart card encoder, the app will come back and let you know it's there, it's ready to be written to or read from. You can then write to the, uh, to the card. As you can see, the data that I tried to write did not work because it was not the correct data. Now that I've switched the card type and have the correct data to write there, it was able to write it. You can also read from that card. Um, eject card is going to move it to the, um, to the eject location on your printer, depending on what type of printer you have. All right. So moving on from our smart card, we also have our new web server feature for our ZC100 and 300 series printers. Um, so if you've worked with our label printers before, you'll know that a lot of them do have some kind of web server interface or web interface to check your printer status, add, um, add templates to it, retrieve templates from it, do the basic things with the printer. So we've now introduced that with our ZC100 and 300 series. Um, you'll be able to edit your connectivity and printer settings, check your printer sensors, update your printer firmware, and print any test cards that you'd like to print. So with the connectivity settings, um, you'll be able to see exactly what connections your printer allows. Um, You'll also be able to see what the IP address is, the MAC address, any kind of information you need to be able to connect to that printer. Any of the boxes here you see that are white, like the printer DNS name, you're able to change. Any of the boxes that look grayed out, those are set values that you cannot edit in the web server. 
with the firmware download, um, you can jump to that tab. Once you're there, you're able to choose a file from your computer. You can uh, add that file here um, and then go ahead and submit it. It will update the firmware on the printer and come back online and you'll be able to come back here and see that your current version has been updated. Uh, here are the sensors for the ZC300 I was looking at. Um, we have some feeder sensors, some engine sensors, and what options are in the printer. So here's a quick demo of our web server as well. So you can see here on the general and ribbon, um, it also lets you know how many images are left before you should clean your printer and how many images are left on that ribbon before you need to replace the ribbon. The options over here are telling you what's installed in your printer. Do you have the ability to do dual-sided? Do you have a magnet, magnetic encoder, things like that? Again, here's our connectivity settings. You can see the IP address, MAC address, uh, what subnet it's on. As you can see there, I'm able to change that DNS name, but when I try and click on the IP address, I'm not allowed to change that. Moving into the printer settings, um, we have a condensed set of settings here for you. Um, the most common ones that you may want to update or check. And they are all editable here, so you can set them on your printer and submit that. In the sensors area again, we just have what sensors you have and what state they are in. Um, if it says unknown, you most likely do not have that sensor in your printer. Yep, so as you can see, once you choose a file for your firmware update, you're able to select it directly from your computer. It has to be a .upg file in order for it to be taken as a firmware file and sent to the printer. And here we have all of our test cards. So we have a single-sided, dual-sided, um, just some simple cards for you to test to make sure your printer's printing the way you'd like it to. If you'd like, you can manage the login of this web server. So only certain people can log in or certain people can access the and change things on the web server and not just access the home page. Okay, right, so that is all of our print integration tools. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, please put them in the question box and we will get to those shortly. James, thanks so much. That was very thorough and a great overview of everything. Um, we actually have quite a few questions, if I can just kind of run through them and awesome. we can address them. We have about six or seven here, so we've got about 15 minutes to spare. So. Let me run through those. The first comes from Justin. Can you also send down RFID commands via the browser? I do not believe you can, no. Okay. How do you, uh, this runs from Dave, how do you change the size of labels on the browser print like to a four by six label? So that would de depend on the label that you're making and the settings on your printer. But inside the browser printout app, there's actually no setting for how big 
or what size of label you are printing on. So really that's the template that you create or your uh, ZPL format that you're creating there. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Matthew comes to us asking a question on Cloud Connect, who is providing the zebra.war and does this only work with Tomcat? I got that right. So the zebra.war is available through our LinkOS SDK. Um, you can get that on our Zebra developer pages. Um, inside there, you'll find a web services SDK, and that web services SDK contains the zebra.war that you can use. Right now, that is set up for Tomcat, um, and the Tomcat is baked into that zebra.war. So yes, right now that only works with Tomcat. Okay. Let's see here. Um, browser, browser. Mod asks, uh, does Card Studio support connection to database through REST slash JSON API? I'm not sure about that. Okay. And just note everyone, if we don't get to all of your questions, please feel free to email us at developer at zebra.com and we can try and address some of those if for some reason we've missed something or if you feel you still have questions after absorbing the presentation. Um, okay, on to the next one, uh, smart card. Smart card calibration is able to save in the printer the new calibration in case the previous was failed to write and read. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. With the web server fail feature, excuse me, for card printers, is it possible to print through a browser, like a browser print? Um, it is possible with those test cards, but there's no way on that web server right now to see either templates that are stored on the printer or upload templates from your computer. So right now the only printing you have on that is just the test prints. Okay, and Christian, um, I know you had a couple of questions. I'm not quite understanding a couple of them. Um, so if you could repost those and be a little clearer on your question, that would help be helpful. Um, I don't know if it's typos or translation. Um, one he does ask is how to consume the API dev device of a CC6000. Uh, do we have any information on that? That's correct. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not time. sure, yeah, yeah. Um, Eric asks, can you use browser print to write an RFID tag? Um, at the moment, no. Um, okay. We do have some other applications that do do RFID, um, but browser print is not one of those at the moment. Okay. That's all I can decipher in the window right now, the question window. So again, if you have additional questions, some of them can be found on our developer portal at developer.zebra.com. And others, um, if you want to just ask a direct question, then we can point you to the right way, uh, right direction of where you can find that, or uh, James can answer you uh, directly. We're happy to do that. Send those to developer at zebra.com. And with that, um, did, were there any other points that you want to make there, James, or we're good uh, to go? I don't think so. I think we okay. are all good. Okay, great. Well, um, we recorded this presentation. We'll, of course, post this and we'll post um, a set of uh, PDF slides for everybody to view as well on the developer portal on this particular blog announcement of this dev talk. Um, so we're hoping that everybody got a lot out of this today. And thanks, James. It was really informative. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending too. Okay. Thank you all and have an awesome rest of your day or night.